All right, fellas, back out on the range once again. Don't hit me or say anything out the way because I got the same clothes on. I got a little bit of time off work, so I'm trying to put some videos out. But as before, we have a comparison. So I have two PSA rifles. One, you can see that it has two different barrel profiles. So you can see this one here has a dimple right up under the muzzle device. This one is straight. This one is the FN. This one is the FN Cold Hammer Forge barrel. It has a little bit of work done to it. And this one is the Freedom model. I uh, should have got the Cold Hammer Forge barrel to go in this one too, but it is what it is. They have, they both have the Freedom rails on it. This one is a little different. It has cutouts at the top and it has a better locking system for this upper. So they have screws in the top. You can see the screws in the top of it. And it has more spots to mount, more cutouts. I like the options on this rail a little better than this one, but it works. It's slim line and it's sleek. <clears throat> this rifle, I have a ton of money put into this one. This one, I want to say it has around, altogether with the rifle, I want to say it's around 13, 1400 bucks. This one, 600 bucks all together with the rifle. Everything, it's, it's all stock, everything on here. So I have a sight mark three times on this one. Holosun 403C solar panel model. It has a decent lockup with the rail and the upper. You can see it. It is not like the other one. The other one has screws and everything else tightened it down. So I guess Palmetto must have learned some lessons. But it also has a CNC trigger. It is a 2.5 pound trigger in here. A BCM charging handle. and a Magpul stock, Magpul front and rear in bus sights. I have not shot this one much. I built it out and gave it to my brother. I just got it back to do a video on it for a comparison of the, the Freedom, which this one has the Freedom rails on it, but it has a Cold Hammer Forge FN barrel in it. So what we're gonna do we're going to test this thing out. We're not looking for accuracy right now. They are zero to 36 yards. We will push these over to steel in a little bit. So let's just compare these things on the fire rate and the controllability. Make sure we have our stock adjusted correctly. We do. You always want to make sure it gets into the pocket of your elbow. That's when you know you have your stock adjusted correctly. Um, we got a few rounds in this magazine. Just gonna see what it's gonna do. Like I stated before, I haven't shot this one much. It does have a little more weight than that one, so I'm sure the controllability is gonna be unfair. Well, what am I doing? I could put it on the other one. So, we just transfer it from one to the other. Let's get one more magazine. I wasn't cranking down like I should have. Let's get one more magazine and go at that again. We're only gonna do five rounds because I want to reserve some for the actual long range. Let's try to load this from a closed bolt and see what happens. It fit in and it worked well. And this rifle has been tuned. I tuned this rifle. 
So it's got the buffer springs in it, different gas block, and um, a different bolt. So, you know, certain bolts, they don't kick out right like they're supposed to. So everything has been tuned. Even the spring has been tuned. I think I got a blue spring in here. I can't remember what it is. And let's see here. Yeah, so I just have a regular H. I don't know if you guys can see that. Just a regular H buffer in here. And it is a, I know for a fact it is a blue spring. So let's crank down on it and see what the recoil control looks like. That felt good. Now let's go over to the Freedom. So this Freedom upper and lower just everything is mil spec on it. The trigger, except for the charger handle, it is a radiant wrap the charger handle. You guys know that's what I love to put on everything. Everything is mil spec. So, with that being said, let's see how we can control this recoil and see the difference between this one and a tuned PSA with a little bit of money into it. That's half the price. This is half the price of the one with the money in it. See if you get what you pay for. Oh, she is extremely overgassed, extremely. Those shells were kicking out at one o'clock. I'm sure you guys seen that over there. It was 12 o'clock, well, 12.30. 1 o'clock, 12.30, 1 o'clock. Maybe some twos close to two, but it is extremely overgassed. This is definitely going to need to be tuned for sure. But it does work. And I will say, I'm going to take you down there so you can see that target. All both of them printed fairly decent with that fire rate. So let's go down and check that out. After that, we're going to run over to the long range and see what we can stretch these things out to. I'm going to use a magnifier on each one of them. <clears throat> I had one, two, three, four off of the paper. The rest were all, well, one, two, three, four, five, six out of the A zone out of all of those shots. They were all in the middle. And that was a very fast fire rate. Both of them did very well. I controlled my recoil pretty decently. So, PSA for right now, you get a thumbs up. But that Freedom definitely needs to be tuned. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get a tune kit and we're gonna tune that thing up. Uh, probably be the next video, but you will see another video from it. But we're definitely gonna tune it up and make it a little bit better. All right, so now we're back out at the long range with the Freedom AR, uh, with the Freedom PSA AR upper. We're gonna give each one of these 10 shots to try to connect out as far as we can get. I have limited ammo. Um, I didn't prepare for this properly. I left the house in a rush. I used a decent amount on getting these sighted in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try to go out as far as we can with 10 rounds with each. If they both tie, I got a bonus round for them. I'm gonna use a different type of magazine and we're gonna try to see which one can get a strike out to 500. Keep in mind, the, the one that's been painted that I gave to my brother, I've already ran that out to 500, but I haven't shot it in a while either. It was a, it was a mil spec trigger in there. That is a CNC trigger in there too, so. Let's see what we're gonna get out of these things as far as accuracy on steel. And I am using 55 grain. This is what I zeroed them with, so this is what I'm using. Oh, let's just go straight to the magnifier. Ooh, I like to mess up, let not have my ears on. 
All right, now we're ready. That's 200. Oh, we don't have a malfunction from where these shells are ejecting straight out. Yeah, they're just landing straight on top of the blank. It's 300. It's 400. What we do, we don't have any wind down there, so we don't have any excuses. Did not get it. As you can see, I told you, I'm just pulling the rounds straight off the blanket. This thing is horribly gassed. DSA, you need to make sure you got your gas in right on your uppers whenever you ship them out. Put them on, put them on meal spec buffers. Make sure the gassing is correct on these things because if that is not good, even with 55 grain, if that is horrible. So we got the 400. All we could get. Let's see if we can do a little better with the souped up Pro Air Forge barrel. Can't tell if that was a strike or not. I thought I heard a ting. All right, let's go to five. Tied at five at four hundred. So I have some saber ammo. Let's see what we can do with that. This is a seventy sevens. And that is the black tip ammo as well, too. Missing wild to the right. Oh, that's enough. Right. 
let's see how it performs with these 77s. Maybe the gassing should be decent on these. Man, I think I was missing the whole time because I'm hearing a hard, definite smack with these rounds from this one. Hmm. Accuracy may be a little better on this one. Or the zero was good. Or it may just like these 77s more, and that one doesn't like the 77. That one does have a one in seven twist. This one has a one in seven twist as well. Let's get back at it. There we go. Let's try for five one more time. Ding, 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 ding. One more, let's get one more out of it. Missed those last two, but we did get one. So, and this one, as far as the range, it looked like the El Cheapo one. I still love the other one because it is gas perfectly. Realistically, you're not gonna be shooting past 200, 300 yards because North Carolina is so close in. I can see people somewhere else. Then I would take the time to actually dial it in at those distances. But this one looked like it's shooting off to the right a little bit. Well, not this one. The cold hammer forge will look like it's shooting off to the right a little. Just a slight bit. Nothing you can't correct. But our reliability, the reliability is good on each one. It's just this one's a little overgassed. I don't have anything else to say about it besides the overgas. The lockup on it is fairly decent on it. The upper and lower was not matched. I um I built the lower. I had that laying around, I had the spare parts laying around, but the upper. I purchased it from PSA about two weeks ago. Just now shooting it. I put it together a couple of days ago. I think it was Sunday when I put it together. Uh, just threw the sight mark on, threw the red dot on, made a few clicks for the adjustment, and I zeroed them both to 36 yards. I don't know what went on with the other one because when I checked the zero on it on 36, it was good. It was dead on. So I don't know if it was a grain weight or what. But this one definitely did hit a little harder. Both of them being one in seven twist barrels, I don't understand why they had those performance differences just now. May have been me, may have been the ammo, who knows. Either way, I don't see much difference out of it besides the gas and getting that correct. I don't see much difference out of either one of them. Both of them come from the same manufacturer. Both of them went out and both of them are reliable. It's just the gassing on this one. I don't like it. I will tune that and get that fixed which I shouldn't have to because the factory should do that. I shouldn't have to do anything to it. But this is what you get when you buy budget. You're going to have some problems, some issues with it. Overall, I gave them both a thumbs up. You guys like this kind of content, hit that like, share, subscribe, come back and enjoy some more videos with me, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.